There is a workflow associated with Cinema 4D Lite that may not be immediately apparent to you. You can create a comp with 3D elements in it, like a camera, a lights, a solid layer, animated cameras, animated lights, and export that comp into Cinema 4D. There you can add 3D objects. And you save that as a C4D file, and then bring that back into After Effects and open that up in a separate comp, and it'll match the animation of the comp that you made earlier. It's really a very slick workflow, and it works very well when you use the 3D camera tracker, because there you can set a ground plane and an origin, a 0, 0, 0 point, and then it's pretty easy to work from that inside Cinema 4D. So to see how this works, go to Working Files, go to After Effects Projects, and go on down to Layers, C4D. I have two comps here. I've got this little 3D animation there, and I've got this vineyard shot, which I've applied the 3D camera tracker to. We'll do the 3D animation first. Now this 3D animation has two lights, a camera, a solid layer for a floor, and a solid layer that I'm using for a placeholder. I'm going to replace this with text. Let's just take a look at that animation, like so. Now for folks who are new to Cinema 4D Lite, making animations in After Effects is probably more intuitive than doing it over there. So here you've got this comp where you can set up the animation that you want, the basic flow, the positioning of the lights, the shadows, and then you can export that into Cinema 4D. Now not all layers will make that move into Cinema 4D. The only layers that will make that trip are lights and cameras, solid layers, and null object layers. So here we've got three out of the four. So let's export this comp. Make the comp active, go to File, Export, Maxon Cinema 4D Exporter. Asks you to name the file, I'll call it Test, and we'll place the file inside the My After Effects Exercise Files folder where it's going to be there just temporarily. Click Save. And now nothing happens. You've got to import it. So double click here, go import that. And now you need to open that up inside Cinema 4D by going Edit, Edit Original. Now it doesn't look exactly the same. There are some changes in color. The lights are a little different, but it's pretty much the same. What I want to do now is replace this solid layer with text. So to do that, I go up here to this freehand, click on that little drop down arrow there and go to text. And normally that adds text at the origin, so where is it? Well, this is not the origin down here. The origin's hiding someplace. Hold on the Alt or the Option key and kind of look up at the top there a little bit. And there it is up there. Oh my gosh. So the origin's up above us there. So that's where the ground plane and the origin are. So let's just pull this guy down like so. Moving on over here to our little red thing there. Let's take a different look at it. Alt or Option, move around a little bit more. I think we can slide it forward a bit. Now you see we're more or less getting this guy lined up. We'll rotate it a bit here just to kind of finish that process off, more or less anyways. Pull it forward a bit more. And now I think we got a pretty good job of it. We can pull it up just a slight amount. Now we need to extrude this text. Let me get a different view there. The way you do that is to go up here, click that little disclosure triangle, and go over to Extrude NURBS. Nothing happens, of course. You've got to put the text inside the extrude nerves by making it a child, by dragging it up there. The arrow points down, and now you're in. And you've already extruded to the default 20 centimeters, they call it. Let's go click on Extrude nerves, and you'll see it right there. Let's change the view a bit here so you can see what's going on. Hold on the Alt key, the Option key, and let's see what that... Okay, it looks pretty thick already. Let's get rid of that solid layer for the time being. Click this plus here. We'll just turn off that solid layer by unchecking it. I have a better idea of how thick things are. Go back to Extrude here, and we'll expand that just a bit, maybe like that. Let's just take another look at it and see how we've lined things up, see if it's going to work OK. Pretty good, I think. All right, let's add some color to that. So let's go over to Content Browser, and we'll go to Presets, Light, and Materials. I'm a big fan of glass. Double click on that. I think we'll go for blue glass here. Double click on that, and that just adds it down here. Let's go back to Objects, upper and upper inner corner. I need to add that to the Extrude. So I drag that up to Extrude there like that. Drop it in there, and there it is. Doesn't look quite as dramatic as that, right? But we need to render it. So let's just take a look at this little render by clicking up here at that little clapboard. Wow, that looks pretty good. So let's go back to After Effects. We'll save this file, save, and we'll go back to After Effects. Now there's no reason to drop this file back inside this comp because this file is 2D and these 3D things, lights and the camera, work only on 3D layers. So it's kind of a waste of time. So I'll just take this guy and make a new comp out of it. Drag down to the new comp icon there. There it is. 
And that may not look all that great just yet, but that's because it's a software render. Let's change that to the final. Looks like that. Wow, is that phenomenal? And it's going to have the same animation as the one we had in the previous comp. Because it's a final render, it'll take a while to make these changes. But take a look at that. Is that not gorgeous? And look how easy it was to make this absolutely stunningly beautiful text just in a couple of seconds with those great lights and the reflections and the shadows. So that's pretty slick. And you can set up this camera animation in advance rather than try to figure out how to do it inside Cinema 4D. Okay, let's go to the Vineyard Comp here. Click on that and then make the camera tracker active. And you see all the track points there when I do that. There they are. Let's go back to the beginning here, more or less. I want to find the ground plane. We're lucky here because there are all kinds of things here that the tracker could latch onto. Let's say you're shooting a golf course and trying to track that. The tracker probably won't find anything to latch onto there because it all looks so similar. But here are the shadows and stuff make it easy to find a ground plane. So I'll just hover around there until I get a nice circle that more or less matches the ground plane or the ground angle like that. Right there is good. I'll click on that. I'll right click on it and say set ground plane at origin like that. Now I want to add a camera that will track with this. I need to click away so that we deselect that. Make you active again like that. Make you active again. Just want to add a camera. I don't need to add any objects. So I'll just go around here until I can find some place to add a camera that will track motion for us. Right click on that. Just create a null and a camera. Now we have a camera that will follow the motion. Anything we add here will look like it's stuck into the scene, which is a good thing. So now we're going to export this thing. So we go File, Export, Cinema 4D. We'll give this one a name, we'll call it Vineyard. Save. Now we need to import it. So go back to the project panel, double click on this. Import Vineyard. Now we need to edit original. So we go edit, edit original. Here we are back inside Cinema 4D. And what's going on here? Well, there's the null object layer right there. And there's the origin way down there. The camera's way off in the distance. That's just how the 3D camera works. Sometimes you really have no idea how it's going to end up looking. So that little origin is just tiny, tiny, tiny. But let's add some text down there. So I'm going to go over here, and we'll click on text. And you can barely see it, right? Let's make it larger by clicking on scale here and scaling that guy way up so we can see what's going on. There we go. Let's change that text to something that we can use. So I'll click on text here and type in text under the object side over here. We'll go vineyard. Click away, and that'll change the vineyard. This isn't 3D yet. Of course, we need to put the extruder on it. So I'll go up here to the extruder, the extrude nerves. We need to put text inside there. So just drag it inside there, pointing down like that. Now we're ready to go. Click on extrude nerves and let's make this guy thicker. I hardly tell that it's getting thicker, but if we change our view, you'll be able to tell. There we go. Make it a little bit larger. Now I want to position it so it more or less matches that row back there in the vineyard. So I'm going to click on the animation here and just take a look at it. That's the animation that we're going to get. We want it to stick to the ground there. So I'll click on pause there and we'll go back there. And let's try to adjust its position to sort of remembering what it was like. We could bring in that video here as kind of a reference, but it's a little tricky to do that. So we'll just follow this methodology to kind of eyeball things. Click on rotation, rotate this like that. We rotate it like so. That's probably more or less what it was like. We just kind of move it along a little bit and maybe make it larger, scaled up some more. Let's just take a look at that. So I'm going to go File, Save. We'll see how that looks back in After Effects. I'm going to drop it in this comp now because I do need to use the background. Drop it down there, comp. We don't need the camera tracker anymore here. We don't need the null object layer anymore. And there it is. So we want to rotate it a little bit like that, maybe pull it down just a little bit. So I'll go back to Cinema 4D. We'll rotate it a bit like so. And we'll go get the Move tool and pull it down a little bit like that. I'm just kind of guessing now. Let's add some color to that. So we'll go get a preset again, Content Browser. Go back a notch. I'm down here to Wood. Double click on that. Let's add this Wood pine wood or whatever one you like. Double click on that. Need to add that to the extrusion. So we'll go back over here to the objects. Drag it up to extrusion there. And there it is. Let's add a light here to give it a little bit more depth over here to add a light. It'll be at the origin, which is helpful in this case. There you go. It's kind of adding some depth to our little scene there. Looks pretty good. We'll just let it go like that. So we'll save this, file save, and go back to After Effects. 
And let's see, oh, that's pretty good. It's kind of buried away there in terms of how bright it is, but you can see that it fits very nicely there. If we start moving through here, you'll see that it's going to match the motion of the scene as if it's stuck to the ground there, as if we had that wooden text just lying there on the ground. If we want to see how it really looks there, we're going to change the renderer from software to final. That's how it's going to look when it's all done, just lying there on the ground. Of course, we could add other things to the scene besides just text. We could add a hot air balloon, for example. But I think you see now how this works. You set up your camera animation in advance inside After Effects, and then export that into Cinema 4D, where you can add objects that will then match that camera move. 